time is now. We're really raising a whole new generation. We keep it holy days. That may not mean nothing to you right now. But you're gonna see real soon. Doing what the Bible says is gonna have you winning at the end of the day. This world is about to be destroyed and we righteously turn it up. Many Israelites don't truly understand what this world being destroyed entails. All right, Shalom. I want to start off this video by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And grace and peace to you elect around the four winds, believing and pushing this truth in all sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your houses. This is your fellow servant, Rokoyo, from the GMS Orlando camp. And tonight's lesson is going to be entitled, Many Israelites Don't Truly Understand What This World Being Destroyed Entails. All right, and that's a long title. <laughs> you know, we might shorten it up through the spirit. But nevertheless, that's the topic of tonight's lesson. All right, because just like we hear our elders and apostles stress so frequently all right, through the spirit, a lot of Israelites don't really understand what they're a part of. They don't really understand what this calling is all about. You know, and the Lord is allowing that statement to magnify itself here in these latter days. Because if Jake really understood the mission that the Lord gave us, the calling that the Lord called us to, to do, what this work was really about and what this ministry was really about, their actions their doctrine and their conduct to be a whole lot different. All right, the scriptures say this, right? In the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter. It reads, Habakkuk chapter two and verse two. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. All right. And the vision is speaking about the prophecies. The table is the Bible. All right. And the prophecies have been written plain upon the Bible. All right. The prophecies have been laid out plain by the Lord's servants, the prophets. All right. So that he may run that readeth it. All right. So that we may run to what? Spiritual and mental preparation for the battle at hand. But instead of running to mental and spiritual preparation for the battle at hand, what we see here in these latter days is a lot of Jake's running to play. Running the party and bullshit instead of preparing themselves and preparing the Lord's flock. Which is supposed to be like this at the end of the day, because it was just like this during the days of Noah, you know. But nevertheless, this is the wrong message and this is the wrong spirit to be pushing amongst the congregation of, uh, of the Lord. All right. And, and, you know, we get a lot of flack for being the rebukers, you know, for being. The, the party poopers, you know, for being um, the reprovers. But nevertheless, it's necessary because what the Lord has in store for America is no light thing. There is great sore judgments that are coming to America, Babylon the Great. And when you speak about an empire being destroyed or a hegemony being destroyed or um, a kingdom falling, that's never peaches and cream. All right. All kingdoms fall with bloodshed and great judgment. And America is no different. Matter of fact, America is going to be worse. So with that being said, there's a certain spirit and a certain mindset that we must push amongst the congregation of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh amongst the Lord's sheep to prepare them. Because the scriptures say this as well in the book of Acts. The 14th chapter. <clears throat> it reads in the 22nd verse, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must do much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the heavenly father. Why? Because as one kingdom is falling, as, as the Lord is raising up our kingdom. All right. That means that this present one has to fall. And we know through prophecy that this, this kingdom is not going to fall. It's not going to fall by any light means. <laughs> all right. We know that this present kingdom is going to fall by great sore judgments, by famine, by pestilence, by civil war, by World War Three. By thermonuclear fire. All right, this is how this world, this is how this kingdom. Has been prescribed to fall, 
And so with that being said and with that being known, this is what the Lord told us to do. Acts 14 and 22. Again, confirming the souls of the disciples. Let's get this word for confirming. In the blue letter is Strong's G 1991. It says, uh, I'm not going to play the audio because the, the uh, video might cut off. So um, once again, it's Strong's G 1991. It says to support further, to reestablish, to confirm, to strengthen. All right. So read it again. It says confirming the souls of the disciples or reestablishing, strengthening the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must do much tribulation to enter into the kingdom of the heavenly father. All right. So with this being said, with, with the great judgments of the Lord being known, all right, as prophets and watchmen in Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, it is our duty to confirm the souls of the disciples to, uh, to, so that they continue in the faith. All right, build up the Lord's sheep in faith, establish them in the doctrine. All right, that is profitable to their salvation. Not putting them in the spirit of mirth and the spirit of party and bullshit so that the day of the Lord catches them as a thief in the night. And by no means is, is, is having a good time wicked. It's not a sin, but it's not expedient. Not to be pushing amongst the congregation. And on top of that, the scriptures also, the scriptures also say this in the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. In the first verse, it says to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. All right. There's a time and a season for everything. There's a time and a season for everything. And right now we're not in the time, nor are we in the season of putting our people in the spirit of mirth, putting our people in the spirit of partying and bullshitting. The Christianity church has done enough of that. The TV, the media, these sports and, and the educational system has done enough of that. Our job as prophets of Yahweh Shem was shy. As watchmen of Yahweh by Shemiah was shy. It's not to rock the people further to sleep. <laughs> it's to wake them up. All right. To confirm their souls, to establish them in this doctrine through the spirit. To establish them in sound doctrine so that when these days approach us, they'll be stable. They'll be pillars in the earth. They'll be capable leaders. They'll be capable vessels of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Right now is not the time nor the season to be partying and bullshitting. Because while Jake is partying and bullshitting, the enemy is preparing. And we know pursuing in the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, that we fight a spiritual and a spiritual and, and, and mental war constantly. There is a spiritual and mental war going on right now. With each and every one of us, you listen to the video of me right now, and we don't much know about it. That's why it's important to have on the whole armor of the Heavenly Father. To teach and, to, and then also teach and to train our people in the armor of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because you, you can't just put on armor and just go to war. You got you to gotta break it in. You got to break it in. And right now in this time of liberty and this time of grace that the Lord has given us, the Lord has given us this time to break in our armor, to break in our faith, to establish ourselves in the doctrine. That's the time and the season that we're in right now. I'm going to keep reading on this. In verse two, it says a time to be born and a time to die. And right now we're in a time of being reborn again, like it says in John, the third chapter. All right. Being reborn again, establishing ourselves in, in sound doctrine. All right. Weaning ourselves off the milk of the scriptures and, to, and coming into that perfection of the faith. All right. And we're in the time of dying and killing off that old man. All right. Dying to the lust of this world, dying to the, the, the desires of this world. It says a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. All right. And right now we're in the time of planting the seed of faith. And plucking up the seed of doubt and plucking up the seed of uh, bullshit and the, the, the seed of mirth. 
A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. All right, and right now we in a time, we ain't in a time of dancing. We in a time of mourning. And you may ask, why? Why are we in a time of mourning? Why can't we dance? Why can't we have fun? Well, while you dancing and having fun, the rest of our nation is in a chaotic and destitute state. While you partying and bullshitting, the Lord's men are being, are being, the Lord's servants are being ran through. The Lord's nation is being exploited. And there's a need to sigh and to cry for all the abominations that are being done in the midst of our people, in the midst of our nation, and in the midst of the whole world. It says a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. And right now we're in the time of gathering the stones of the third tabernacle, the spiritual tabernacle, man, the, the tabernacle of David. All right, these lively stones pursuing in the book of First Peter's. First Peter. All right. It says a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. And right now we're in the time of speaking. All right, speaking the words of truth. All right, magnifying our voices against Babylon. All right, magnifying our voices to herald, herald in the second coming of our Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, and also proclaim these prophecies that the Lord left behind. All right, to proclaim judgment to these nations, to proclaim salvation to the elect of the nation of Israel. All right, and judgment to two thirds of the nation of Israel. All right, we're in the time of speaking. All right, the great words of Yahweh by Shimei was shy. And the Lord is causing his voice to be heard here in these latter days by his servants, the prophets. All right, because the prophets are the, are the Lord's mouthpiece pursuing the Hosea 12 and 10. It says, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. And right now we are in a time of war. We are in a time of war. And there's only but there, there's but so long that you can run from that fact that you can run from that reality before it hits you. And right now, what you see a lot of our people doing is trying to run from that reality that war is at hand, even though they're proclaiming that this place is going to be destroyed. They don't know what that entails. They don't know what a kingdom falling entails. That's a time of great tribulation. They don't know what war entails. Right now, we're in the midst of war. And the Lord told us to be as what? As the children of light, right? Those who are not asleep. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm going to jump down to the point. And five, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, not, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. All right. And the others of this world, they're sleeping. All right. They partying. They bullshitting. They having fun. They feeling the lust of their flesh. They appealing to their five senses. But for us at the house of the Lord, but for us uh, that serve you, how about Shemiah was shy. The Lord commanded us to watch and be sober. Watch for the prophecies. Watch the societal changes. Watch the spiritual shifts. Watch and be sober minded. You know, we it's, 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 it's lawful to have a drink. You know, scriptures say be sober, speaking about mentally, spiritually. Be sober. Sound in the doctrine, sound in the doctrine of Yahweh by Shimia Washai. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. All right. But um, I had a couple more precepts I wanted to bring out. All right. 
Let's get this. In our second Peter chapter three and verse 10, it says, but the dead of the Lord will come as a thief in the night and the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. All right. And, and how is the Lord going to come as a thief in the night? All right. The Lord is going to come. Well, who is the Lord going to come as a thief in the night too? Is a better question. All right. Who is the Lord going to come as a thief in the night too? To those who are not watching, to those who are not measuring the times diligently, like the scriptures tell us to do in second Ezra, the ninth chapter and the ninth verse. I mean, the ninth chapter in the first verse. All right. The scriptures tell us to measure the time diligently. Why? Because the prophecies that the Lord left behind are a spiritual measuring stick. To tell us when roundabout the Lord is getting ready to make his return. The scriptures say no man knoweth the hour, nor the day, nor the time. All right. But the Lord left us the prophecies to look for. To tell round about when he's about to make his second return. And by the proxies that are kicking off in the earth to today, to this date, right now, we can tell that the Lord is right around the corner. He has to be. He has to be. So with that being said, for those who are not watching, the Lord is going to come as a, that thief in the night. Because they weren't watching for the signs. They didn't hear that alarm go off. They didn't hear that glass break, that window break. They didn't hear those footsteps. They were deep. They were in deep rim sleep. <laughs> they couldn't hear the signs of a robbery. It says, but they, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? All right. And when you get this word for conversation in the Greek, Strong's G391 on the strophe. All right. And it reads behavior, manner of life, conduct, behavior, deportment. All right. So seeing that all these things are getting uh, getting ready to be dissolved. There's a manner of life that should be being upheld, that should be being promoted here in these latter days. And this is not it. This ain't it. This is not the manner of life that should be being promoted here in these latter days. Simply, it, it, it's, it's simple, you know. Seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of persons are you to be in all in all? <clears throat> it's like you in all holy conversation and godliness are right? all holy manner of life and godliness. And a part of that holy manner of life, all right, that separate manner of life, all right, is having is is having the ministry, the testimony of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, promoting the testimony of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Because when you go into these guys, you know who are pushing the spirit of mirth amongst our people, who are pushing the spirit of bullshit and and, and having fun and and all this, they have no ministry. They don't know the mysteries of the, of, 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 the, of the scriptures. They can't tell you a parable. They can't tell you a dark saying. Majority of them can't tell you the name of the Lord. They'll spew out some madness like Yah. They can't guide you in how to, in how to maneuver through Babylon the Great. They can't do any of these things. They can't tell you what the MOTB is pursuing the Revelation 13 and 16. They can't break down the prophecies. Some of them can't even tell you who the so-called white man is. Really, they'll tell you that's, that he's Japheth. That's what you deal with when you deal with these people who are trying to push the spirit of mirth and bullshit amongst our people. 
All right, and yes, there's a time for that. There's a time to be in good spirits. There's a time to have fun. But there's a balance to everything. There's a balance to everything. But these guys don't preach that balance. Neither do they show that balance. They just push the spirit of mirth, man. You know? But I'm um, going to get two more and then I'll close it out. All right. This is Luke chapter 7, verse 32. 31, it says, And the Lord said, Whereunto shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children, sitting in the marketplace, and calling one to another, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. All right, in the men of this generation, the Lord likened them unto children playing in the marketplaces. And when you look at it, that's, that's what Jake loved to do. They love to party. They love to play. They love to play. Man, the scriptures say this. Isaiah 46 and 8. Remember this and shew yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. All right, let's get this in Job chapter 38. And verse 11. Job 38 and verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. All right, the Lord is requiring the men of our nation to man up. Stop playing. Get serious about something. Stand for something, man. Right now is the time to take that stand. <laughs> and, man, and, and, the, and the Lord is making it manifest. All right, who's taking this thing for a joke? Who understands what they're a part of and who doesn't? At this point in the game, this shouldn't be your, the, the focal point of your mindset. The focal point of your priorities should not be to go out there and party. The focal point of your priorities should be to understand and to, and, and to establish yourself in sound doctrine in this doctrine. To establish yourself in the faith. That should be the focal point of your priorities right now. Because we see Esau even getting ready to come down. And guess what? We got something for that. The elect got something for that. Lord willing with that number. All right. The Lord got something for that. Because his elect has already been written to overcome that through faith. And right now we're rehearsing the righteous acts. All right. And we're establishing ourselves in this doctrine. Building up our faith so that we might be of those elect. We might fulfill those lots. So that we might fulfill those lots. But, um, let me see. Was there any more on this? Jake really don't need to understand why they celebrate holy days, man. I mean, that's that's really what it is when it comes down to it. A lot of these Jakes don't understand, man. They just don't. They just don't understand what they're doing. It's, just, it's a fad. It's a fad. And when it really boils down to it, a lot of Israelites really don't want this world to be destroyed and they really don't want Yahweh shot to return. They don't. Because if they did, their actions, their doctrine, and their conduct will be a whole lot different. Hey, with that being said, that's all I had to say for tonight. No one is at a final to the elect. Shalom.